Right, should we go with After Hours? And the hero of mine, the one and only Grant Thomas. How's it going, Grant? Yeah, thank you, Dean. Thanks for that. That's great, bye. A legend in Wales. Probably everyone's favourite Welsh bodybuilder. Do you think? Yeah. yeah. First, first back in the 90s when they were yeah. building. That's when we were bodybuilding then, weren't it, Dean? Yeah, real men. Yeah. You're keeping well then, Grant? Yeah, not too bad, bad. Not too bad. Uh, just getting older now, ain't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am anyway. Yeah. Just um, before we, we delve back into what you've done, I just want to quickly go through some of your top titles so people out there who may not be aware of you know what you've done. Okay, right. yeah, yeah. You're a NABA Mr. Universe winner. That's right. You've won basically every domestic title, NABA Britain, IFBB Britain. That's right, yep. You also competed at the Night of the Champions as an IFBB pro. That's right, yeah. That was my first professional show I was. <laughs> it was what, sorry? That was my first one. First one. And if I remember rightly, you also won a WPF Universe. That was at the junior level, yeah. Junior oh, sorry, but sorry, sorry. Yeah, i done the light heavy, sorry, out in south of France. Yeah. That's right. I took the class winner, but I didn't take the overall. I thought there was another one in there somewhere. Yeah, there was. And this was before weight classes, especially when you, you turned pro, you just demolished everyone. And you mainly competed as, in a, as a light heavy, but you looked like a heavyweight. Yeah, so they say, Dean, yeah, I uh, I always seem to have looked heavier than I actually weighed on the scales. Um, I remember when I done the British final, the IFB British finals, I actually put my entry form in as a heavyweight, um, weighed in on the day, and I didn't make the class as a heavyweight. So the rulings being that you, when you weigh in, you were supposed to just weigh in, down your boxers, and I was a light heavy which everybody put to my, uh, that I would have been better for me anyway, because I was the he- I was the bigger of the top end of a light heavy class, which did work, work well for me. Just going back, um, how tall are you, Grant? Five foot six. You're five foot six. And at the biggest, how big were your biceps? I can't remember, Dean. Um, I think I got them up to about eight, 17, 18 inches. No, they were bigger than that? No, I, I don't. I don't know, Dean. I didn't really. It, some say they, uh, they said that they could have been eight in the 20 mark. I, I I can't remember what they were off the top of my head, Dean. Top season, your arms are something like almost 22 inches. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. 80, yeah. Because they were. <laughs> And do you remember your quad size? Because you were known for your quads as well. Uh, top of my head, Dean, I, I, I know that one point, I think my my quads could have been around about the 32. I know my quads got to my, by my waist size. Yeah, at five foot six. At five foot six. <laughs> I, 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 I had a quad bigger than my belly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back a little bit then. So I, I, this, I'm trying to do this off remembering when we've um, chatted in the past. Yeah. So you started off boxing? Yeah, I was amateur boxer. I was. I started, uh, started amateur boxing at 10 years of age and went from there, boxed up until the age of 20. And it was the, it was the boxing that started me using the weights because I was getting older in the boxing. I had to go up a class from juniors to senior. But being short, I was going to be boxing boys who were taller and longer reach. So what they suggested to me was go to the gym, do some weights so I can get a bit stronger, so I can work the inside when boxing of the taller boys. Went to the gym, started using weights, and found that I actually put on a little bit too much muscle because when I went back to the boxing, I was just a little bit too slow because my shoulders, the lactic acid was building up too quick. I put on little bit too much muscle so i thought right well i either now gotta strip the muscle back off or just leave the box in there and that's what i decided to do i left boxing and just carried on bodybuilding but it wasn't bodybuilding that i intended to be in the beginning it was just i was using the weights and i just thought well i'm putting weight on i'm putting muscle on 
So let's just follow it on and see where we go from here. But it was, uh, and it was, uh, it was only um, in to start as trying to build muscle and strength for my boxing. That's how I stepped into the bodybuilding, not knowing that's where I ever was going to be. So how soon was it before you stepped on the bodybuilding stage? Um, I think it was within within uh, within eighteen months, two years. Because I was, I took up uh, the bodybuilding and I was entering my first show at the Naba Wales at a junior. And it was my last year as a junior. So I think I was just 21, 22. So it must have been around about just two two years. I think the first time I saw you was down in West Wales and it was a Mr. West Wales in Carmarthen. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yes, yeah. I th- that show I actually just done on the on the actual week of that show, um, and I remember speaking to I think it was Dougie Evans, and Dougie Evans mentioned that there was going there was a bodybuilding show going on, and they were a lack of competitors, and I knew about it like five five or six days prior to the, the competition, <laughs> so I just turned up and. Stuck a bit of tan on the day before I won. <laughs> Can you remember you walking out and people going, who's this guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, that was the early days, Dean. How did you find... So once you got through the juniors, how did you find um, the diet? Did the diet come easy to you? Um, yeah, I did. Difficult. Um, what it was for me in the beginning was knowledge. It was the not because it was, we didn't have the internet when I was competing. You know, I had, it, there was nothing to research. So everything we done was through books. And I remember trying to do my first couple of shows through reading the sliced book oh, and okay. just just picking out different different foods, different diets, just reading up on what food does what, so that. When you're getting ready for a show pre-contest, you change certain aspects of your diet, which was all new to me in the beginning. But it wasn't so much I found it hard. It was just the knowledge of what to eat and when to eat it. And then finding out on certain foods, then watch the body. So I didn't actually find it difficult. Boring, because obviously everything was unflavoured, no salt, low sodiums, only drinking water. But I actually enjoyed it. Because I, I think a pre-contest diet, I find better than an off-season bulking. Because while you're dieting, you know exactly what you're eating and at what time you're eating it. And you, you, you just keep you, keep you um, on level. So I know exactly then I'm eating chicken, I'm eating rice, I'm eating broccoli. And I just constantly just keep eating the same things, to be honest, in the beginning. And did you find that quite easy when it was all laid out? Or did oh, you find because yeah. a lot of people complain with the boredom of the same foods? Uh, the, the boredom does, yeah. But I think what kept me going was this you can see the alteration in your physique each day. The, you know, yes, it gets boring and but it's what you're gonna achieve at the end of it, I think it kept me going. You know, it, um and I craved certain things towards the end of a diet. But never really struggled because what the way I used to try and diet was I would always give myself a cheat day every tenth day. So every tenth day I'd allow myself to eat whatever I want that day, and then carry on dieting for another ten days. So I got to the point where I didn't really crave too much through the week. Some people can get away with it. Some people they struggle to lose weight, so they can't give themselves a cheat day every tenth day. But I think it worked all right. It worked well for me. You know, you know, on that tenth day, would it be from when you wake up to when you go to bed? Yes, yeah, I wake up. What I what I try to do was the day, from the time I woke up, even though it was my cheat day, I would consume my four hundred grams of protein. So, regardless whether I'm eating donuts, biscuits, McDonald's, I'd still make sure that I would get my protein in through the day. 
all my other calories would come from all whatever, junk, all the junk food I would I would eat that day, all day. And then I'd go to bed, following morning, back, back to your chicken, rice, vegetables. But I think by having that spike in your calories as well, it, it boosts you. It boosts you for the following week. And providing you can either, if you've got a weight class, obviously you've got to monitor your weight. But if it's just a height class and your physique is coming on, I think you can get away with it. So you won your first junior show within about a year, 18 months? Yeah. And then what was next after that? Did you, ca- did you carry on through the juniors? Uh, no, because I'd done the junior Mr. Wales and I'd done the junior Mr. Britain. I'd done, come first in the junior Wales, went, went up to Blackpool and done a NABA junior Britain, and I come sixth. From then, I think... I took a couple of months out because that was my last year as a junior. So I'd have to go up. I think I'd done the light heavies in the WPF Newport, Wales. I think that was only 12 months later. And that was at a light heavy class because WPF weren't height classes. They were weight classes. And I won my first as a light heavy. And that was within another 18, a year to 18 months. And then after that, you went into the NABA and went through the NABA ranks? NABA then, I think I stayed with um, I stayed with NABA for, for all of 97. I'd done the NABA Wales as a, a Class 3 winner. Then the NABA Britain, won the overall NABA Britain in 97. And then the NABA Universe, and won the overall Mr. Universe as well, all in the 97. Now, one of the best things, one of my fondest memories as a kid going to the bodybuilding shows, I can remember you coming out to Firestarter, guest posing. 